طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, Today inshallah I thought we can uh, just go through some uh, review questions preparing for uh, the midterm inshallah on Wednesday at uh, 8 p.m. Uh, so these are a set of prepared uh, questions uh, covering chapter 4, 5 and 11. Of course for, for the midterm we, uh, uh, we cover the introduction part uh, which is the review for network 1 as well as the, uh, these three uh, chapters 4, 5 and 11. So start with uh, chapter 4. Uh, in chapter 4, we talk about digital transmission where we transfer digital uh, data using digital signal in uh, baseband. So this is uh, covering the baseband uh, transmission. Uh, so the first question here, uh, of course, we, uh, in this chapter, we covered line coding schemes. We uh, covered several uh, line coding schemes. We talked about the pros and cons for each line coding scheme. And uh, we talked about the different phenomena like the baseline wandering, the self-synchronization, and the, uh, uh, the ability for uh, error uh, uh, recovery. So uh, here in this example, we talk about one specific uh, uh, line coding scheme, which is the B, uh, 2B1Q. Uh, so uh, in 2B1Q, we represent uh, each two bits as one uh, signal level. So uh, uh, 2b, 2 to the power, sorry, 2 to the power m here equals exactly to the number of levels. Uh, and we have studied different um, uh, approaches where we have the uh, number of uh, uh, bit representations uh, are not equal to the number of uh, levels or the number of level combinations. So for 2B1Q, uh, the best uh, uh, way to start representing the different these different uh, data patterns as 2B1Q line coding scheme, the first thing you should start with is to uh, write the lookup table. And as we have learned in class, the lookup table has two different columns. So uh, we have four different uh, bit representations. We have 0, 0, we have 1, 0, we have uh, 0, 1, and we have 1, 1. Okay, so uh, you, can, uh, 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 you can write any signal levels to these four uh, bit representations. So let's say we can start with uh, positive 1, and uh, then positive 3 and then uh, negative one, and then negative three, okay? So that's when previous level is positive. Of course, we have studied in class the other case when previous level is negative. For the previous level is negative, we actually uh, uh, toggle the bit level. So the, the plus one becomes minus one, and the plus 3 becomes minus 3, and then plus 1, and then plus 3. Okay, so this is, uh, this is already 80% of the grade once you uh, write the lookup table correctly. Um, uh, so, and it doesn't matter the signal level that you uh, assign to, to any bit representation. The most important thing is that here you have to toggle uh, all the levels to negative. The positive becomes negative and the negative becomes positive. And the reason for that is to create some kind of alternations and that actually enhances the error recovery at the receiver side as we have started in class. So, um, so with that said, what we need to do here is to uh, 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 write the uh, signal representation of these uh, bit patterns. So of course, for remember here in this example, the uh, the last signal level has been positive, and that's very important. So you know that the first uh, signal level it has to be based on this column, okay? Because the last signal level has been positive. Okay. So so for straight zeros, we have each two zeros here uh, represented by one signal level. So uh, zero, 0, is represented by the uh, plus 1 here. So uh, then it becomes plus 1, 
and then plus 1, and then plus 1, all the way to the end. And because it's positive, we, we are always stick to ourselves to the first column. So that's very straightforward. For the case B, however, we have uh, straight ones. For straight ones, we, we are starting in this column here. So for, for straight ones, we have 1, 1, which corresponds to minus 3. So it's somewhere here. Okay. And then uh, uh, now the signal uh, level is negative. So we have to jump to the second column. When we uh, uh, jump to the second column, 1, 1 becomes plus 3. So we have to, we have to go all the way up to plus 3. Three. And this is minus 3. Okay? And we go this way. When we uh, uh, go here, the signal, the signal level is positive, so we have to look at the positive column. So we go back to minus 3, and then to plus 3, and then to minus 3, and then to plus 3, and so on. Okay? So that's easy, and uh, even though we have straight ones, but we have some kind of alternation because of this concept of uh, 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 alternation, and that's good because it enhances the uh, error recovery at the receiver side. When we have uh, signal level changes, we have uh, better error recovery and better self-synchronization. So for the case C, we have 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and so on. So for 0, 1, uh, the first 1, 0, 1, we go uh, negative. So uh, uh, it's minus 1. So we do it this way. Okay. And then since we are negative, then uh, uh, we have to look at the, uh, at the next column. So it becomes positive 1. And then uh, 0, 1 again. So it becomes negative 1. And then positive 1 the negative one, and so on. Okay. So that's how it looks like. Okay. Uh, please let me know if you are not following anything. And then the case D, case D is, is kind of irregular. So we have zero, zero first. So the first zero, zero is uh, uh, plus one. So it's this way. Okay, and then 1, 1. 1, 1 is minus 3. So we have to go this way. And since we are negative, we have to switch to the other column. And 0, 0 becomes minus 1. Okay. And then we're still negative. Then 1, 1 becomes plus 3. Here. Okay. And then now we are positive and 0, 0 becomes plus 1. Okay. And then 1, 1 becomes, becomes minus 3. Okay. And then <coughs> 0, 0, 0, 0, and the previous is negative, so it becomes. We are 0, 0, and so it becomes minus 1. And then 1, 1, and we're still 0, so it becomes plus 3. So it's a periodic signal with a regular shape like this. Okay? So any question, please uh, interrupt me. Uh, I, I, I need it uh, as interactive as possible. So that's the first part of the question. The second part here... It talks about from from the graphs guess the bandwidth for this scheme using the average number of changes in the signal level, which is the uh, uh, the baud rate or the signal rate. So normally, the what we have studied in class is that this bandwidth or S equals to C times N times one over R. Okay. However, I didn't give you C here. C is calculated based on the statistical, the statistical number of changes given all the, uh, all the possible combinations for all the bit patterns. Okay? But here, 
uh, we cannot calculate this statistically, but the question here asks for guessing the, uh, uh, this signal rate from these four representations only. So this is a very specific uh, request. We did not study the, uh, uh, this uh, part in class uh, in a straightforward way, but we have, in this case, we have to go back to the original definition of the uh, signal rate, okay? Uh, the original uh, definition of the signal rate talks about the uh, number of changes per unit time, the number of changes per unit uh, time, okay? So we cannot calculate C here, but instead what we could do is to calculate the average number of changes based on these four representations only. So first, average number of changes equals how many number of changes here? Zero. How many number of changes for case B? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? So we have seven. Plus, how many number, how many number of changes for case C? Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And by the number of changes, I mean any change in the signal level. Okay? Any change in the signal level. So, again, this is seven. And for case D, the number of changes are 1, 2. This is the signal level representation or the signal change. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have here 7 representations, 7 uh, changes, 7 signal changes. Okay? So these are four different cases. So the average is we have to divide by four okay so until now we calculated the number of changes based on uh, even if it's eight if it's eight it's it's fine yani if you if you if you write it eight it's fine so this assumes that we have previously here we have a, another change okay we did not we did not do that in this signal representation but if you put it eight I would accept it there's no there's no issue with that okay so these are the average number of uh, changes for these four cases, right? So if, if I tell you, now, this is very important, but if I tell you that the per unit time here means that in one second, we need to calculate these number of changes in one second, right? So if, if I were to tell you that this is, this is uh, zero, uh, uh, time and this is one second okay so now it becomes easy because you can calculate the bit rate n based on that and this this is the uh, this will be directly the uh, 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 the number of changes per unit time here the bit rate will be uh, will be 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 and so on so it's 16 bits per second so that's the bit rate and the number of changes per second is this so I'm done okay however I did not I did not tell you that this is one second I don't know okay so this could take this could take as many number uh, 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 as many time duration as uh, we want it to be Okay, so in order to, in order to get it for any n, for any number of bits per second, we have to divide this by the number of bits in this bit duration, which, how many number of bits in this bit duration? We have 16. So we have to divide that by 16. Okay. So that's the number, of, the average number of changes per bit. So by dividing by 16, this is the number of changes per bit, right? 
if we multiply this whole thing by the value of n, then we can get the average number of changes for any bit rate. Okay? Because, because the, 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 I did not tell you how much time duration this, these 16 bits took in the time domain. Right? So you have to divide by the number of bits and then multiply by the bits per second so that we can calculate the number of changes per second. What, Hadi? Okay, I need, I need, uh, I need to get some uh, positive actions. Okay, so we have to divide by the number of bits in order to get the average number of changes per bit and then multiply by n, okay? So if I tell you that this, this duration is one second, then n becomes 16, okay? Which means that, which means that uh, the number of changes per second is actually this part without dividing by 16 and multiplying by 16, okay? But the general rule is I, I need to divide by the number of bits and then multiply by the number of bits per second in order to get the bandwidth uh, 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 per second. Okay, so that's, that's the first example. The second example, asking about what is the result of scrambling the sequence uh, uh, 1, 1, 1 and all zeros using one of the following scrambling techniques. Of course, we have studied scrambling techniques as part of this chapter. We talked about sc scrambling techniques. These have been introduced to uh, the uh, line scheme AMI or alternate mark inversion. The problem with this technique or AMI was the fact that AMI uses uh, zero voltage level for uh, the case of uh, zero bit, which in that case is not desirable because the, uh, the zero voltage level uh, 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 makes the uh, receiver very much error uh, prone or it does not improve the error uh, detection and self-synchronization at the receiver side. So that's bad. So, uh, in order to introduce some alternations, we have started two uh, different techniques. The first one is block coding. The problem with block, block coding was the fact that we have to introduce certain overhead. So, each uh, four bits become five bits. Uh, so, that's, uh, that actually adds some overhead. Scrambling is another technique to uh, create some alternation in the signal while not introducing any overhead. And that's, that was actually using the concept of violation. By violation here, we mean that we violate the original logic of AMI to tell the receiver that this is not the proper sequence of AMI, and instead this is actually scrambling. Okay? So, uh, <clears throat> so we have studied two scrambling techniques. The first one is uh, B8ZS, which was the one that was introduced in Europe. And this one replaces each eight, eight zeros with a specific sequence. Had the faker Edel? Had the faker, had the. Asma al Abedli, okay. Okay. Next time, do not volunteer to answer before I give you the uh, before I give you the, the permission. Okay. So <clears throat> so zero zero zero. So the 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 sequence is zero 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 v b and then zero and then v. Type. I told you. I told you here that assume that the last non-zero signal level was positive. So remember, for AMI, the one is represented as bipolar, which means that one is negative and one is positive. So, since the last one was positive, then this one becomes negative, negative one. Okay. 
and then positive one, and then negative one. And now we have to represent the uh, 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 the scrambling. So we have to replace each eight zero uh, bits with that sequence. So it becomes the first one becomes a zero 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 and then and then it becomes violate so this is similar to this unlike the normal uh, sequence of ami this is called violate and then b which is bipolar and then zero okay and then another violate so this is violate. This is B, this is violate. And then B. Okay. So what happens to the last three zeros? These are not eight consecutive zeros. So we, we go back to the normal representation of AMI, which is zero voltage level. So this is the uh, representation uh, for uh, B8ZS. Uh, Type. For the case of HDB3, uh, it tries to be more conservative by uh, uh, representing each four zero combinations, not eight bar. And we have two possible cases. We have the case where we have uh, uh, odd, odd number of non-zero elements before uh, uh, this four zeros, and for that we represent them using the uh, uh, the bit representation zero 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 v. And for the case of even, we have a b zero zero v. Okay, type. So we uh, go back here. So this is minus one uh, plus one minus one as usual, and then. We have these four uh, zeros. For these four zeros, we have to calculate the number of non uh, 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 voltage level, non zero voltage levels, and we have to calculate whether they are odd or even. So, here in the question, I told you that the number of non zero pulses, including the triple ones, is, e, is actually odd. So, in, each, in, in which case, we have to use this. Uh, uh, representation which makes it zero 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 and then v so this is v okay type and then from uh, and then for the next four zeros what is the number of non uh, zero voltage levels are they odd or even well from these to this the number of non zero uh, voltage levels is actually zero and zero is even so pay attention to that. Zero is even. So from here to here, the number of non-zero voltage elements uh, are uh, uh, zero, and zero is even. So we have to go bipolar, and then zero, zero, and then V. And then for the next three zeros, we do not have four consecutive zeros, so it becomes zero, zero, zero. Okay? So I hope it's clear. Uh, let me know if it's not clear, uh, 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 so I can uh, describe it again. So that's the scrambling, and this is, this is, these are uh, uh, quick questions for chapter, four. again, for chapter four, we studied digital uh, transmission. For chapter five, we started, we studied analog transmission, where we actually transmit the uh, digital data as analog signal, okay, but still in the baseband. We studied two parts here, uh, analog transmission for digital data, and then uh, as part of this chapter, we also studied when we actually want to transmit analog signal over analog, uh, uh, sorry, analog data over uh, uh, analog uh, carrier, okay? So for... Um, for the first part of this chapter, we talked about different schemes like uh, ASK and uh, uh, PSK or uh, phase shift key 
and FSK or frequency shift key, and the uh, uh, the hybrid method where we talked about QAM or quadrature amplitude modulation. In the second part of this chapter, we talked about uh, transmitting analog signal using analog carrier, where we talked about AM, FM, and uh, uh, PM. Okay, type. So, uh, so here, this question is asking for drawing the. We want to draw the constellation diagram or the IQ diagram. As we have studied in class, this IQ diagram is very useful in visualizing the properties of, uh, uh, of the uh, composite signal or ASK or PBSK in a very uh, efficient way. So remember for ASK, it's uh, amplitude shift keying where we, have, uh, we represent the digital data using a sine wave with phase of zero all the time. We just change the amplitude of the sine wave. Okay, so we represent zero as an amplitude and one uh, and as another amplitude. So here, so for this case, we want to uh, draw the constellation diagram for ASK where the peak amplitudes are one and three. So of course, here we represent the, uh, for the IQ diagram, we represent the amplitudes and the phase of the, uh, 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 of the sine wave. And of course, for ASK, the phase is always zero, so we keep ourselves in the x-axis all the time. Okay, so the, the first amplitude is one, and the second amplitude is three. So we only have two dots to represent the ASK composite signal. Okay. So for binary PSK, we represent IOSR. Tadali. You have a question? The Y axis is the Q. So this is I and this is Q. And Q here talks about quadrature or it uh, gives us information about the phase of the sine wave that we use for uh, uh, for data representation the phase okay so for ask the phase of the time of the sine wave is always zero and that's why we stick ourselves to the i or to the x okay however as we will see for uh, for psk this is binary phase shift key for case b this is binary phase shift key so we represent the signal, the data, uh, 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 as 0 and 1. So 0 will be represented using a sine wave with a phase shift of 0, and the 1 will be a sine wave with a phase shift of 180 degrees. But for both of them, the amplitude of the sine wave is the same. And that's why I only need to give you one amplitude here, because it's the same. I don't change the amplitude. I change only the phase. Okay, so for, for, for the case B, you can just uh, uh, put it like this. And of course, this is two. Okay, if, if, you, if you want to put it like this, it's also fine. Okay, so this means that the first sine wave will have uh, uh, a phase shift of 90 degrees and then the second sine wave will have a phase shift of 370 uh, degrees okay or uh, uh, 3 pi over 2 yeah 3 pi over 2 okay it's fine as long as the phase shift between the two sine waves is 180 degrees okay so either this or this but not both of course pay attention to that so this is for the case of BPSK so this is the case of ASK. For C, for C, I have QPSK. For QPSK, had the only what is R? What is the value of R for QPSK? Had had the tawayul. Reem, fadal ya Reem. Reem, 
كم؟ The value of R R R The value of R Okay حد يعرف ايه value of R For the case of QPSK R is the number of bit levels corresponding to the uh, 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 the, the signal levels the ratio between the number of data elements to the number of signal elements right so for QPSK, we represent each two bits as one symbol. خلاص يا ميسم سويت. We represent each two bits as one uh, symbol. So in that case, R is uh, is two, and the number of constellation points is a is 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 four. Okay, which is the number of of constellation points, the number of constellation points is actually 2 to the power r. This is very important. Okay? So it's always 2 to the power r. So if we have r equals to 2, which is that each two bits are represented using one symbol, so in that case we have four possible points. So here, for the case c, we need to distribute four points, four constellation points on this IQ diagram and of course remember uh, uh, that here we are allowed to change the phase but not the amplitude and that's why I give you here only one number which is the, uh, 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 the amplitude and that's all you need so here for the case of QPSK we have one, two, three, so we can put it like this, this, and this, and this. So this is QPSK, and here this is a three. Okay? Can, can you have a, a different representation which is also correct? Yes. You can have the representation like this, so it becomes three. Three, three, and three. So either the blue one or the black one, both are correct. The most important thing is that here the phase is 90 degrees. The phase between the two constellation points is 90 degrees. This is very important. As long as the, the phase is 90 degrees, why 90 degrees? Because we have four points and we are not allowed to change the uh, uh, amplitude, so we just need to divide the 360 degrees over four points. So we have the phase shift between each two points, 90 degrees. Okay, type. The fourth one is a little bit tricky. The fourth one is eight QAM. So we have for QAM, quadrature amplitude modulation, For quadrature amplitude modulation, uh, 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 we have uh, uh, we change the amplitude and the phase. So QAM introduces another degree of freedom where not only you change the amplitude, but you can change the amplitude and the phase. Okay, and by eight here we mean that of course here R is three, right? And we have eight constellation points. Okay, so uh, R is three, which means that we represent each three bits as one symbol on the IQ diagram. So we are allowed to change both the amplitude and the phase. So we can uh, uh, have one quadrature amplitude modulation, uh, quadrature phase shift key uh, at uh, one like this. And another one at three. So one, two, three. So here we have eight constellation points, and we change this is one, and this is a this is three. So this way we can distribute the eight constellation points on the IQ diagram very efficiently. There are 
some very important uh, uh, questions here in this uh, uh, in this example, which are not highlighted in this uh, in this uh, exercise. How can we calculate the the bandwidth for all these cases? We have studied we have studied one equation that we can use to calculate all these. Uh, 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 the bandwidth for all these cases. حد يفكرني بي فكرين حد فكر equation. حد فكر equation. ما فيش. Okay. So the bandwidth. The bandwidth. So the bandwidth is one plus d times s, where s is n over r. Okay? So this equation can be used to calculate the bandwidth for any of these cases. What, what changes from one case to another? What is the changing uh, 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 parameter here for all these cases? R, bravo Ali. Sah. Okay. So Aisha and Reem, Aisha. Okay. So what's changing from uh, a case A, B, C, and D is only the value of R. Which means that if two cases have the same R, they have the same bandwidth. This is very important. Okay. So it doesn't matter how we how we distribute the constellation points on the diagram. So for for the case of ASK and BPSK, we can assume here that the two bandwidths that the bandwidth for each of these cases is the same because the value of R is one. Also, for uh, uh, for uh, if we were to if we were to change uh, case D, and instead of 8 QAM, it becomes 8 PSK. Okay? <clears throat> Can anyone tell me what the, 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 the constellation uh, diagram should look like? That's a tricky question. If we were to change case D to be 8 PSK instead of 8 QAM, حد ممكن يشرح لي constellation diagram بشكله ايه؟ تفضلي يا هدير. A square uh, That part is correct but it's not a square, no. لا هو السؤال for 8 PSK what is the difference between 8 PSK and 8 QAM ايوه will be like what طب اوكي هي 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 ماشي طيب هي هي ما يسم ما يسم جاوبتها طيب هو for for 8 PSK, remember, we are allowed to change the phase but not the amplitude. So it will be it will be like this. We have eight points distributed in a form of like a circle like this. Because we can change the phase but not change the amplitude. So it will be like one radius. So it will look like a circle. So the question here, bandwidth-wise. 8 PSK and 8 QAM, are they different in terms of bandwidth? No. Remember that. So they are not different in terms of bandwidth. Both of them have a value of R of, uh, equals to 3. And both of them had 8 constellation points. Right? So in terms of bandwidth, they are the same. What's different? Which one is better and why? حد عنده إجابة؟
جاوبي جاوبي اجابه صح جاوبي اجابه كامله غدي يا هدير عشان تاخدوا تاخدوا البونس هدير اشرحي لي اشرحي لي معناه ايه صح تمام That's a perfect answer. <clears throat> so for eight PSK, the points will be very close to each other, so they will be prone to noise and the uh, error. Uh, 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 so the receiver will be very error prone because of the int introduction of uh, of noise. So in terms of bandwidth, they are the same. But why QAM is better? Because QAM gives us an extra degree of freedom that allows us to distribute the concentration diagram, uh, the concentration points. Uh, more efficiently in such a way that we can mitigate noise more efficiently. Okay. Another uh, exercise here uh, talks about, uh, uh, this is a, a, a narrative uh, exercise where we have a corporation that has a medium with a bandwidth of uh, one megahertz. So, uh, so we have a bandwidth of one megahertz, okay? And the corporation needs to create 10 separate channels. So we need to divide that into 10 separate channels. Each capable of sending at least, so the, 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 the rate for one, the bit rate, sorry, so the rate for, for one channel, or the, sorry, the bandwidth per channel, yani, should be uh, 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 should be one megabits per second. So this is the rate per channel, the rate per channel, okay? Because the bandwidth is different. Type the company has decided to use the QAM technology. When we talk about uh, rate and bandwidth, if if I remove this and put it PSK, it doesn't really make any difference. Because we are talking here about uh, bandwidth. We're not talking about uh, probability of error. And in this course, we did not study the probability, calculating the probability of error, estimating the probability of error, because it, it requires very complicated uh, techniques to calculate it. But uh, we, we, we only learned how to calculate the bandwidth. Okay? <clears throat> Type. We know that bandwidth equals 1 plus D times S, which is N over R. So we need, we need the uh, uh, bit rate, we need the, ba the bandwidth for one uh, channel only. So this RH is, a, is N, which is one megabits per second. So for one channel, the bandwidth per channel equals to the total bandwidth divided by the 10 channels. So we need 10 separate channels, which means that the bandwidth per channel is 10 to the power 6 over 10, which is 100 kilo hertz per channel. So each of these is actually 100 kilohertz. So each of these channels is in fact 100 kilohertz and we need this channel to be capable of supporting a bit rate of 1 megabits per second okay so this bandwidth per channel which is 1 uh, kilohertz equals to 1 plus d and d here is 0 times n which uh, in that case is 10 to the power 6 over over r we don't know R. Actually, R is the is the unknown here. So the question here asks for what is the minimum number of bits per bar or bits per symbol? Okay. This is actually R. So we need to calculate R based on the fact that we need each channel to support 1 megabits per second. Okay. 
So the bandwidth for each channel is uh, 100 kilohertz, and we need this to be, and we need this to support uh, uh, one megabits per second. So what is R? R, this is zero, of course. So R is 10. So we need to represent each 10 bits as one symbol. Okay? So the other part of the question here, what is the number of constellation diagram, constellation points in the constellation diagram? So the number of constellation points equals to 2 to the power r, which is 1024. Which means that we need 1,024 QAM in order to uh, get a bit rate of 1 megabits per second for each of the 10 channels. Okay? Which means, of course, that the, the, the constellation points will be very, very close to each other, or we have to use very high power uh, to uh, uh, distribute the, uh, the points further from each other on the constellation diagram. Okay, so that's that's another uh, type of uh, questions where we can estimate the number of bits per symbol or the number of bits per baud, and from that we can calculate the uh, number of uh, symbols or the number of constellation points. Any questions so far? Time. In chapter, in chapter 11, the last chapter, we have uh, covered the uh, data link control where we have uh, studied the uh, uh, two major parts. The first part was a very light part. It talks about framing. Uh, and the other part talks about flow and error control, which are the two major functionalities for the data link control sublayer. For data link control sublayer, we talk about framing uh, and uh, uh, flow and error control. For framing, we talked about two simple techniques which are used for bit stuffing and byte stuffing. So th these are very easy. Uh, and we talked about the difference between uh, these uh, two framing techniques. For the case of flow control and error control, we have started two major categories where we have, first we assume that uh, uh, the channel is, uh, is not noisy, the channel is perfect in which case we do not have ARQ, we do not account for errors. So whatever we send, we don't care about receiving any acknowledgement, we just uh, send the frames one by one without waiting for any kind of acknowledgement to, uh, or if we were to uh, receive the acknowledgement, the acknowledgement only is needed for flow control, but we don't have any error control because the channel is perfect. Then the other category was uh, 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 supporting the imperfect channel where uh, we uh, we talked about stop and wait ARQ. We talked about also uh, 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 go back N with ARQ and we talked about selective repeat with ARQ. So this is a composite uh, question where uh, uh, we need to use stop and wait. We need to use stop and wait ARQ protocol between two nodes A and uh, B over one meg megabits per second link. So here we have we have A and we have B and this link is one megabits per second link. So the, 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 the rate or the bandwidth uh, in terms of uh, megabits per second is, is one in, uh, from A to B type. We have frames sent from A to B. Each frame is 1,000 bits. Okay. And the receiver is 5,000 5, kilometers away. So the distance between A and B is 5,000 kilometers away. And the propagation speed is 2 times 8 to the power, uh, times 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Of course, uh, as you can imagine from these values, we can calculate the, the transmission delay and the propagation delay. So for the first part of the question, we need to fill 
the missing lines for the sender pay attention to the question very very carefully here we need to calculate we need to uh, fill the missing lines for the sender to process that request to send event question now how many how many events for the case of stop and wait ERQ does the sender need to process حد فاكرهم هم ايه يا ميسم طيب and the request is sent تمام طيب يبقى هما زي زي ما هي بتقول كده we have uh, uh, the uh, we have the request to send which is to get the frame or to get the packet from the network layer and then we do the framing and, and, and then we send it over over the channel this is request to send from the sender and the sender also processes what we call arrival notification for arrival notification we need to uh, wait for acknowledgement to come from the receiver to give us an indication that uh, the frame that we have sent has indeed been received successfully. And also, we have the timeout where, <clears throat> where if the, uh, 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 the acknowledgement was not received within a specific time duration, then the timeout will uh, expire or the timer will expire and in that case, we need to retransmit the packet. And that's that's uh, for the case of ARQ. Because if I don't have ARQ, I assume that the channel is perfect and we do not have to account for errors. And uh, in that case, we don't have to uh, uh, wait for uh, timeout to expire because I always expect the acknowledgement to come on time because there's no way it, was, uh, 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 it gets lost through the channel. Type. <clears throat> So, for the request to send, this is coming from the uh, network layer. So, the first thing we need to do is to uh, uh, create the frame, or as we call it, make. Make frame. So, remember here we have uh, the serial number. The serial number here is very important. The serial number is the sequence number that each frame takes. And, uh, uh, and remember, for the case of perfect channel with no errors, I didn't have to assign any sequence number to the frames because I'm not expecting any error to happen. But here, because there is a possibility that the, uh, uh, the frame can be lost, in which case I need to tell the receiver with, whether the frame that I'm sending is actually a new frame or a duplicate frame. Because if the... Uh, if the, if the receiver sends the acknowledgement and the acknowledgement gets lost, in which case I will retransmit the frame. So I have to have a way to the receiver to inform the receiver that this is a duplicate frame in which case the receiver will discard it. So in order for me to distinguish the new frames from the duplicate frames, I have to have a sequence number. But luckily for the case of stop and wait, I only the sequence number only goes... 0, 1, 0, 1. Why? Because the, I, I only need two sequence numbers only. 0 and 1. Why? Because the, uh, uh, I have a window of size 1 for the case of stop and wait. I can only send one frame okay, and wait for the acknowledgement. So in which case the window size is 1. So the sequence number has to be uh, uh, at least two sequence numbers. Right? So... Here, I have to account for uh, the sequence number uh, uh, for the case of ARQ. So once I make the frame, I can just send it. However, for the case of ARQ, as we said, there is a possibility of error, in which case I have to store the frame. Okay? Then I can send the frame. Once I send the frame, I can now increment the, the uh, uh, sequence number. And remember, 
Here, this, uh, see, this increment of the sequence number is actually a modulo 2, which means that what is the sequence number after 1,000 frames being sent? What is the sequence number? Had the can you Bravo, Adi. Sah. Sah. So after 1,000 frames, sequence number is zero. One, one, 1,000 modulo two. 1,000 modulo two, right? So I can calculate the the, the sequence number after 10,000 frames after so the frames always go zero one zero one zero one okay so this way i can calculate the sequence number after sending as many uh, frames as i like type after this there is a, a a a very important thing that we have to do here which is start timer start timer do i have to put any sequence number I don't have to put a sequence number. Why? Because remember, um, uh, the only case where we need to start multiple timers for each frame is for the case of selective repeat. Other than that, I, I, it's only one timer for the entire window. And here the window is one. So it's only one timer running at one point in time. Okay? I cannot start two timers. So in that case, it's only one timer either start it or stop it. Okay, type. The last step here, because I'm, I'm not allowed to send any more frames except when I receive the acknowledgement, what I need to do here is to set the can send to A to false. Okay, so these are the missing lines. Type. For, remember, if I were to, uh, to do the uh, the go back end, the two major changes here is that first, I need to check the whether the sequence number is within the window that I'm using. Okay, so instead of only one flag, instead of only one flag, in the case of go back end, I have to check whether the, uh, uh, the incoming uh, request has a sequence number which is within the window because if it if it goes beyond the window then I cannot accept it I will have to go back to Steve and discard the request to send event I don't have to do anything okay which in that case we uh, do it using the flag because we only have two cases I'm sending one frame or I cannot send a frame okay so that's that's why we are using one flag but for the case of go back n it's a little bit uh, complicated I have to check that the incoming event is within the window that I'm allowed to send uh, uh, the frames. And of course, the other change is that the sequence number increment here is by, is, it depends on the uh, window size. So for example, if I have a window size of seven, then the number of sequence, uh, uh, the number of sequence numbers has to be at least eight, which means that here, uh, this is modulo 8 increment. So I go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 0, 1, and so on. Okay? So I have to uh, uh, know the uh, modulo number based on the possible sequence numbers that I have. Type. So this is the first part of the question. For the second part, we need to calculate two things. The transmission delay and the propagation delay. The transmission delay here is, is actually the, uh, uh, the length of the frame, which is 1,000 bits, divided by the bandwidth, which is 1 megabits per second. So this is simply 1 millisecond. Okay. For the case of propagation delay, propagation delay is different. It's actually the distance the distance, which is 500 kilometers, divided by the, the speed. The distance divided by the speed. So in that case, it's 50 
so it's 25 milliseconds okay so these are very important so that this is the transmission delay and the propagation delay right second part of the question here we talk about calculating the time required to send 1 million bits of data assuming that we have 20% of the frames or acknowledgement get lost remember if the frame get lost or the acknowledgement get lost for me there is no difference it's 5000 kilometers yes sah 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 مظبوط 5000 kilometers مظبوط كلام but the uh, 25 millisecond is correct yes it's correct طيب so assuming 20% of the frames or acknowledgements they get lost how long does it take to send 1 million uh, bits of data okay طيب so first let's let's just visualize how this works this is very important to uh, 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 to start this calculation. So imagine we have A and we have B. So A has specific number of frames. How many frames do we have using or, or sending 1 million bits? We have number of frames equals 1 million divided by 1,000. Okay, so we have actually 1,000 frames. And that's ignoring, of course, uh, uh, the header and trailer. Okay, so if we, have <clears throat> if we have 1 million bits of data, of course, we have to add header and trailer. But in that case, we ignore the size of the header and trailer. So we have uh, 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 1,000 uh, frames. So these 1,000 frames will, uh, will line up at A. So this will have a sequence number of 0, 1, 0, 1, and so on. Right? So the first thing A will do is that it will first send, send that frame using one transmission time. Okay? So this requires transmission time. Once we spend one transmission time, then the frame becomes a signal that will propagate using the, uh, 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 the propagation time to B. Okay? So what does A have to do after transmission? A has to wait and it cannot do anything until the acknowledgement comes back which takes another propagation time. Of course, of course, the transmission time for, for the acknowledgement here is ignored. Right? Because the acknowledgement <coughs> is a control, is a control <coughs> frame and it has <coughs> a very small size, so the transmission time is, is ignored. <coughs> so I actually have to add this here. Ignore the acknowledgement, transmission time, and header and trailer. Okay. So ignore the effect of these while estimating that time, because actually considering them will not add much to the uh, to that uh, uh, total time. Okay. During this time, remember, during this time for stop and wait, A cannot do anything other than waiting. <clears throat> In other words, here the window size is one. So A cannot do anything while this frame is being transmitted until it receives the acknowledgement for that frame. Then it sends the other frame, which means that total time for one frame equals to one transmission time plus two propagation times, which means one plus 25 times 2, which is 51 milliseconds. Okay? Type. So the total time for 
1,000 frames equals to 51 times 1,000 millisecond. So it's 51 seconds. However, remember, we have to account for 20% of the frames being lost. So, so there is a 20% chance that the frame will be lost, in which case I have to retransmit. So how many, how many frames did I actually try to send? I have to send total number of frames Uh, uh, including error frames equals to 1,000 times 1 1.2. Okay, so that's very important. So I need to send 1,200 frames because 20% of them will get lost. So in which case I end up with 1,000 frames which, is, which are the frames that I need, which means that the total time, including error, equals to 1,200 times the 51 uh, uh, millisecond per frame. So that's the total time, okay, in millisecond, of course. Okay, so any questions? Right. So, so that's, that's the time if we were to uh, use uh, stop and wait, and in that case we send one frame, we transmit one frame, and then we wait for the, that frame to propagate all the way to B, and wait for the acknowledgement to propagate all the way back to A before we send another frame. So in this part of the, uh, of the question, we want to repeat the same thing, but in that case, using go back n with a window size of 7. Okay? Type. So again, we need to visualize how this works, and that's, uh, uh, that requires a little bit of focus now. So A, so we have A, and we have B. Okay? And, and, and again, A has the 1,000 frames lining up like this. So in that case, we have seven we have seven frames per window, which means that the sequence number has to be at least eight. So eight, which means that m is three, two to the power three is eight. So it goes zero, one, two, three, all the way to seven, and then zero, one, two, and so on. So that's how the the, the, the sequence number works for the case of uh, of go back n with a window size of seven. So now we want to do the same exercise. So the first frame will be transmitted and it will be converted to a signal using one transmission time, which is one millisecond. Okay? And then this is frame zero. And then once A finishes transmitting that frame, it doesn't have to wait. So it can send frame one in that case. So after one millisecond, it sends frame one. So where is frame zero? Frame zero is being propagated next to it. Okay? And then it can send actually frame two, and frame one is here, and frame zero is here. And all of them are propagating together. And you can, you can really visualize this like uh, uh, an example where uh, when you travel, مثلا, when, when you uh, get to the gate of the, uh, of the highway, you drive your car, you get to the gate, and then you have to uh, wait to pay something in order to get to the highway. Okay? And this is the service time. So imagine that you spend one millisecond to, to pay the fees in order to get to the highway. <clears throat> and be <clears throat> behind you are uh, some other cars waiting to be serviced. So after you take one millisecond, you get to the beginning of the highway, and then the other car <clears throat> comes right after you. It takes another one millisecond to pay, and then it gets on the beginning of the road. And once all of you get to the beginning of the road, you, you, you drive your car, all of you, you drive your car in the highway, 
using the same speed, which in that case is the propagation speed. So it's as if all the cars are going as one caravan through uh, the highway. So what I'm trying to say here is that we calculate the transmission time for all the frames in the window, but the propagation time is common for the entire window. That's very important. So here we calculate time for one window equals to the, the, the number of frames per window times the propagation, sorry, times the transmission time, which is one millisecond, plus, again, two propagation delays. So two times 25. So in that case, it becomes 57 milliseconds per window. This is very important. Not per frame. This is per window. <clears throat> okay? Type. So, total time for, for uh, 1 million bits becomes EBA. How many windows do we have for, uh, 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 for all the 1 million bits. For all the 1 million bits, and we said that we have 1,000 frames. So these 1,000 frames will be divided into 7 frames per window, and then the time per window is 57 milliseconds. So that's the total time. However, this total time does not take into consideration the, the errors. Remember, 20% here, this applies to uh, case C. 20% of the frames, they get lost. For the case of go back in, if we have one frame lost, what do we do? We have to repeat <clears throat> the entire window. That's what we said about go back in, that when... When we repeat, when, sorry, when we have one frame lost, we have to repeat the entire window. So in other words, we have to send number of windows 20% more in order to account for errors, which means that total time, including errors, equals to 1,000 over 7, divided by 57, divided, uh, sorry, times 1.2. Okay. Any, uh, any questions? <clears throat> so first, uh, so first, there's no questions so far. Uh, there is a question about the midterm. Of course, of course, uh, uh, you you can expect to have questions like this in the midterm. So in the midterm, as I said, try to go through uh, the dummy uh, exam on Blackboard uh, because it has uh, different variations of the possible types of questions that you uh, that you may expect. <clears throat> 